So here we're looking at the erythrocytes. Recall that erythrocytes are 99% of the formed elements within the blood and the other 1% are the five different leukocytes. Erythrocytes have a unique shape. They're only about 8 microns in diameter, maybe about 2 microns thick. And I added some images down here to give you a better idea of what we're looking at here. So the cells are wide at the end and flattened in the middle. And this shape happens to allow for optimum flow of the blood cells in very large vessels because we know that blood is flowing very, very quickly. This shape also allows to increase the surface area so that it can grab onto a little bit more oxygen. Now why are red blood cells or erythrocytes red? And they happen to be red because they carry hemoglobin. So the hemic ions in hemoglobin, we've got the iron, it oxidizes a little bit and changes to this red color. You might notice that these cells do not have a nucleus. They used to have a nucleus. These cells arose originally from a stem cell way back in the bone marrow and it takes about seven days for a cell to come from a, a stem cell to become an erythrocyte that's fully functional in the blood. So it had a really big nucleus and that nucleus eventually shrunk as the cells already had all of the proteins they need to be able to do their job. These cells also are lacking all of the organelles, no Golgi, no endoplasmic reticulum, no mitochondria. This is a good thing that they don't have mitochondria because then they will not need to use the oxygen as a step in producing energy for the cell. They have another mechanism to gain the energy they need to continue functioning, but they will not need to take the oxygen that's needed for the other cells in the body. Because they do not have a nucleus, this means they do not divide. These cells will live about 100 to 120 days, and then they are removed from the circulation by the spleen or the liver, and new ones are continually being replaced into the bloodstream from those stem cells. There are several diseases that involve blood, and I cannot possibly list them all here, but anemia comes in different types, including iron deficient anemia, where the cells will eventually look smaller and paler than normal. There is also sickle cell anemia, which I can't really demonstrate here, but the cell takes on a much smaller sickle shape, cannot carry oxygen as well, and plus that shape will lodge in tissues of the body and create a lot of pain. Malaria, which is a parasitic disease, relies on some of the organism actually residing within the red blood cell. So these are just a few diseases that we could find involved with the red blood cell.